Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? What has to do with alcohol inks and gel plates. Now in this video, I'm going to get my splatter out. I'm going to let loose with that, except it's not going to make a big old mess. It's not going to go everywhere. I'm not going to get it on the ceiling like I do sometimes when it comes to paint. Now the prints that we're going to be making, they are going to look like this. Actually, these are the actual prints we're going to be making. And they're both using the same process, but there's one little tweak and it changes the look at them. So it's one little tweak and you can get more of a dreamy look as opposed to having more of the defined dots. So check it all out in this video. What you're going to do is take each color of alcohol ink that you want to use and simply shake some of it onto the gel plate. And the ones that I'm using here, they're by Marabou, and I absolutely adore them, the color, the vibrancy, and especially the shape of the bottle, because it makes it really easy for me to just sort of get this splatter look to things without actually having to like really fling paint or do anything like that. So I'm just kind of shaking it on here almost the way you shake a salt shaker. If you squeeze the bottle while you're shaking, more of it comes out. If you don't squeeze the bottle, less of it comes out. So you have full control over how much is going to end up on this gel plate. Now this next bottle that I grabbed, I'm shaking up for a very good reason. And that's because it's got some wonderful iridescent shimmer in it that needs to be shaken up right before you use it. Now this one's called Rainbow and you can see that shimmer that came from it. And pretty much Marabou had me with the word rainbow. You know how much I love those things, right? It adds just this wonderful sparkle to it. And you could put just a little bit on there, but I really like it. So you probably saw how much of it I put all over the plate. But with this technique, you get to pick and choose how much of what color or how many colors you're going to use to fit whatever look that you want. One of the big reasons why I love to use a lot of colors when I do this technique is because of how much fun it is for me to splatter these colors around. So just the act of shaking that bottle, getting that color on there, it just feels good doing it. I enjoy the process, so that's why I keep adding more and more to this. Something really strange is about to happen with the camera. There's going to be a flood of light. Things are going to get a little bit brighter than what I really want them to be. And I have no idea why this happened. Nothing changed while I was doing this, and it's a very overcast and cloudy day. So this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So I don't know, maybe it's a secret solar flare, or who knows why this is going on, but it will go back to normal here in just a moment, and we'll be able to see the colors again. I've got just about all the color on here I think it can handle for the look that I'm going for, so I'm going to step away from it. Once I've got it all on there, I'm going to give this about a minute, minute and a half to start drying. A lot of this is dry, but not all of it. There's still some alcohol ink on there that's wet. So that when I put this white paint on there, you'll see how that color kind of mixes in with the white paint. Then I'm going to take my brayer around and I'm just going to blend that white paint over the whole thing. None of this stuff that I'm doing here is an exact science. It's art after all. So when you put the white paint on, if you feel that it's not giving you the full coverage, then just add a little bit more to it. But once you've got that white paint spread all around, then put a piece of paper on it and make sure you've got great contact between the paint and the paper. I'm using my hands here, and sometimes I'll use my hands, sometimes I'll use the brayer. It's not like there's a right or wrong with this. You just need to make sure that you've got really good contact between the paper and the gel plate so that when you lift it up, you're going to pull up that alcohol ink. The paper that I'm using to do this is a 90 pound cardstock, and you want to know why I chose that? Not because it's got some magical property that makes it just perfect for this. It's because it's the one that I like the feel of. It's the one that I can get my hands on easily and I can buy in bulk. And that's why I tend to use that as my cardstock. And I encourage you to use whatever paper you enjoy using on a gel plate or whichever one you've got easy access to. So with this print, you can see all those dots, those splots of alcohol ink. They're still there, but there's a little bit of something going on in the background. I'm trying to catch the shimmer for you here, and it's a little bit camera shy, but I tell you in person, it's got this most wonderful sparkle to it. Now that you know how this process works, let's make one little tweak to it and create a slightly different look, one that has a bit more of a dreamy look to it. We're going to start it the same way of adding the alcohol ink onto that gel plate. And as you're doing it, have fun, let go have fun just shaking that color around. Because the nozzle is pointing down when you're shaking, that means the splatter's being directed. You might get a little bit around the edge of the gel plate, but it's not like this stuff really goes flying the way traditional splattering does. 
but you still get all the fun of doing it. Another thing that I really enjoy about making these kinds of prints is that every one of them is very unique, meaning it's not going to be the same every single time. Because think about it, it depends on how much alcohol ink you shake on there, it depends on what colors you use. So have some fun, use whatever colors are calling to you and just experiment, let yourself go. Put as little or as much of that alcohol ink on there as you want. And yeah, you knew, you knew that rainbow was coming in here, didn't you? I can't resist that sparkling stuff. So what about you? Where do you fall on the sparkling continuum? Do you like to add lots and lots of it to what you do? Or do you tend to go for a less sparkle look when you're creating? Let me know down in the comments. And just talking about sparkle makes me want to add even more of it to this. This next step that we're about to do, this is where we're going to do things just a little differently from the first print. Now the first print, at this point, I gave it some time to dry so that about two thirds of it or so were completely dry before I added the white paint. But this time, I want only about half of it to be dry before I add the white paint. And when I say these numbers like half or two thirds, that kind of thing, these are very loose approximations. You just need to be in the neighborhood. And you'll see what happens because I didn't let the alcohol ink dry nearly as long. That's what's going to give us that dreamier look to this one. I'm going to add the white paint on here. And I'm sort of swirling it around more here just because I feel like it. I'm having some fun with it. However you're comfortable adding white paint onto your plate, go for it that way. And then I'm going to brayer it around. Now because there's a lot more wet alcohol ink on here still, that means the colors are going to be mixing around more. And you're going to notice that the white paint isn't so white pretty quickly. That's the wet alcohol ink mixing with the white paint. And that's what gives you more of that dreamy look. So if you want the dreamy look, let there be plenty of wet alcohol ink on there. And if you don't want that dreamy look, if you want more of those defined drops and splots on there, then let the alcohol ink dry more. And this is just one of the many, many, many techniques that you can do with a gel plate. And if you like having things broken down for you step by step, if you like knowing what's going on and understanding why things are happening and what little tweaks you can make to things to get different looks, then check out all of my workshops. I have a link down below for you, or you can find them over on my website at acolorfuljourney.com. So I'm about to lift up this paper and I want you to really notice the areas where the alcohol ink has got that very drop shape to it and the parts where it's very dreamy, very ethereal, very blended. Because the parts where you can see that form of that drop, that's where it was dry. And where you get more of that dreamy kind of look to it, that's where the alcohol ink was still wet when I added the white paint to it. Here are the two prints side by side. So which do you prefer? Do you prefer the dreamy look or do you prefer more of the defined drops? Well, guess what? You now know how you can do either one of those. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new one out. Want some more fun? Want some more play? Then check out my website over at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.